Goedenavond, good evening and a warm welcome to the first concert of a three-part concert series that I'm organizing called Jana Invites. So I'm Jana Pelser, I'm a viola player and I also sing a little bit. Uh, and these three concerts uh, are meant to show you what the role of the viola can mean in different types of music. Um, and therefore I invited my um, musical friends, my the, the people I play with, because I play in many different ensembles. Um, and yeah, tonight you're going to uh, watch the Blink Quartet. It's a new group um, consisting of uh, very special string players. Um, yeah, they are from uh, from Amsterdam, and they're not the normal, the, not the usual string player, I would say. <laughs> Right, so that's uh, how they sound, but not only like that. <laughs>
Thank you very much for listening to this music. Um, this piece we just played is written down. Part, partly. How do you say? Partially. No? Uh, by George Dumitriou. No, sorry. George Dumitriou. All the way from Romania, but based uh, in Amsterdam. Um, George, what on earth were we playing? And what were the people listening to at home? What on earth were you thinking of? <laughs> uh, this was a, a part of a series of compositions that I wrote, especially for the, for the Blink uh, Quartet. And... Um, they are inspired by, uh, first of all, by improvisation. The, the special thing about is that uh, they're written in a way that uh, they allow room for improvisation and for the input of everyone else in the quartet. And uh, for example, the first piece that we played, um, that one is more more um, based on um, on a meditative concept. It's more like a a mantra, it's like a repetition of uh, of uh, four notes, which um, 
become a, yeah, the improvisation actually there, it's, it's more about uh, everything else but the four notes <laughs> that are in there. And um, this one, uh, the piece that you just heard, this is perhaps a bit more classical music uh, inspired. And we have uh, fragments that are written and that are, they are um, um, connected through improvisations. And um, the last piece that we're going to be playing, it's, uh, it's also inspired by a more meditative uh, thing. And um, uh, one of the concepts that we used in general, improvising and while working together, was um, flocking. And that's like when you watch the birds uh, flying in a big uh, flock, you know, and they have a certain movement, which is very organic and at the same time very organized. And that was very inspiring to observe and to think how to recreate that in a way through through music and yeah, through our, the movement and the sound perhaps, one of the things that we are doing. And there are a couple of rules, of course, that we can think of to to make the movement uh, together. But there's also freedom. And yeah, if you watch a flock of birds, you don't see like a very mathematical passive. What's happening is quite organic. And I find that very inspiring. I think it's a it's a great place to be playing music from. Does that answer your question? <laughs> Well, yeah, it doesn't answer it maybe, but it makes it a lot more clear what we are listening to, that's for sure. Um, yeah, so you are you a bird watcher in general? Do you like watching birds? Uh, well, I became one, I guess, <laughs> <laughs> on the way. I wasn't really, no, I wasn't really into bird watching. I got the chance to, to travel last week to, to Ameland, to the north of the... Of Netherlands on an island, and there's that's a, a place for bird watching, and it was definitely a good uh, uh, inspiration for this. But you know, after thinking about the concept and you know getting more into depth with that, but I definitely recommend bird watching. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Hey, and um, so this string quartet is not a normal string quartet because usually there's two violins, one viola and one cello, and this string quartet has two violas, um, here in the middle, it's us. Um, <laughs> and uh, is there a reason for that, actually? Why we are with two violas? We couldn't find another violin player. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it really started like that. Eh? <laughs> but uh, I think it's, a, it's actually a good combination. It, it fits very well and uh, um, well, there's also some some pieces that I play on the violin, but I think this specific combination of violas it's uh, it works very well. Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure everybody knows what a viola is. <laughs> <laughs> viola is a little bit bigger violin. It sounds lower. <laughs> and um, so I, I I would like to just uh, also. <laughs> Uh, talk a little bit with you guys. Yeah. So, um, Pao Sola Masafretz, mm -hmm. you are from Catalonia, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's a special place. Or well, not special as any other, I, I would say. <laughs> 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 not, uh, not more than others. I come from there, I, I grew up there, I spent most of my life, and now I'm here in Amsterdam for already four years, working, yeah, working in improvisation and uh, this kind of music. Mm. So, could we say that you are a hardcore improviser? You don't play Beethoven or, <laughs> or Mozart on your cello anymore. Not really, no. I did a concert with Beethoven a month ago, but <laughs> the Beethoven <laughs> festival, but it was with improvisation. With, uh, <laughs> of course, was included. But that's funny, yeah. But yeah, I play mainly modern music, and uh, that includes improvisation or modern jazz, uh, modern classical also, like old Chinese, modern versions, yeah. Great, so the freedom that George gives with his pieces in this music, it's very much for you as a player. Yeah, great, we can hear that also. 
Geert de Koe on the violin, the only violin in the quartet since you. Um, so, you are also a very special player. Um, you also do a lot with movement, right? You are. Do you want to say something about yeah, that? Yeah, so um, for me, actually, this quartet is the great place to be as a violin player. Um, because I feel a lot of freedom in how we work and the way we, we construct our music. And uh, yeah, so I play the violin, but I also dance a lot. I work a lot with groups in kind of workshop way. Uh, and I like to implement all these kind of things together. Um, so I guess the way I bring it in in the string court, it is by um, doing warm ups. <laughs> I think it's very important, but through that also really mm -hmm. sensing each other and uh, finding a different way in than just sitting on your chair and looking at the sheet music or um, yeah, really seeing how through the body we can also sense each other. Um, and I really enjoy exploring different process of creation. Uh, so of course you can write a score, you can improvise but there are many different ways of, of uh, creating as well. Um, so the way I work often is in a big space with loads of big papers and things written on the wall and uh, people doing something on their own and then we come back together and see what came out. Um, yeah, it makes me happy even talking about it and I feel that uh, yeah, this string quartet is super open and uh, ready to jump into anything and to try out and then see where it goes. Uh, so for me, that's a very exciting place to be in combination with the violin, yeah. Great. Yeah, just so to explain for, for the people at home, so we are not a usual string quartet, and when we come together, we first do a physical warm-up and we feel each other's presence uh, in the room, and that we can also, by doing that, we can more easily react to each other when we play music. And usually we start with a free improvisation um, when, when, we, uh, when we rehearse. Uh, and sometimes those free improvisations already sound like uh, a composition uh, because we all come from different places, but we also all share a similar language. We are all um, human beings and um, but we are exposed to to similar things in daily life and, and you can hear that back and it's really amazing to to just for example when I play something then it gets recognized by the others and they do something with it and they or they imitate it or they respond to it so it's very interesting um, and also for me as a violist uh, it's great to play with another uh, viola player next to me because um, I can really match my sound uh, to, to George, uh, his, his playing, and vice versa. We can really create a nice, uh, warm uh, sound. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's really cool, this, this uh, project. Um, I don't know how, what time it is, if we have a lot of time left, because we have one more piece uh, written by George uh, that we can play. Um, eight past nine. Eight past nine. Great, then let's do that piece. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the people at home, uh, if you have any questions for us or anything you want to tell us, please write it in the chat. Uh, because after playing the next piece, uh, I'll come back to you. I will quickly read uh, through the, the chat. And maybe there are some questions that we can uh, answer for you. I hope you enjoy. So George, uh, the last piece we're going to play, what, what was the inspiration there or what, what are we going to listen to? Um, well, the title is very technical, I have to say. It's, uh, it's called Repetitions Barrio. Barrio is a 
com- it's a shortcut of uh, bariolages, which in uh, Romanian is what what you call when you arpeggiate, you know, going from all the strings of the instrument. But <laughs> <laughs> there is much more than that technical title. So this is about uh, this is a series of chords. Um, created that in a way that they they make uh, quite rich sounds together with the group. Um, and I think it's specifically related to the flock of birds. Like, it's very much that. And we're going to be flocking <laughs> <laughs> in this barrio piece. Mm-hmm. Let's flock.
Thank you very much for listening. This was the last piece we are playing tonight. Um, in two weeks, we have the second concert of the series, and it's going to be something completely different. I will play pop music with the band and the viola. Uh, I will play it like a guitar, so plucking, and I will be singing. And two weeks after that, on the 5th of March, I'll be playing here with uh, Fuen Santa Mendez. She's a double bass player and singer from Mexico. And I'll be doing a duo where I play viola and sing at the same time. And we do a lot of interaction uh, between the two of us. So um, yeah, I hope you really enjoyed uh, this first concert. We did, I think. <laughs> and I will now go through the chat to see if there were any questions and I come back to you. In a, in a minute. I'll just get my phone. Thanks a lot for watching. Thank you. Where's my phone? Yeah. <laughs> I can't see the chat actually in, on the on the phone. I don't know how to do this. So maybe it's not cool. Thank you, yes sir. Goed je de chat bekijkt op. Oké, ik heb gehad dat ik het meer niet moet zien. Ah, oké. We kunnen helaas niet um, de chat bekijken op de telefoons. Ik weet, ik weet niet, we moeten nog eventjes leren hoe dat uh, gaat. Uh, maar ik wil in ieder geval uh, Matrix Rotterdam heel erg bedanken. I would like to thank this place, Matrix Rotterdam. The best kept secret in Rotterdam. Yes. A place nobody knows, I mean, a few people know about. Uh, but it's getting bigger and bigger, more and more people get to know it. They have amazing uh, world music usually here and now they completely switched to digital live stream concerts so visit their page and um, I would also like to thank a lot uh, Fons Podium Kunsten to make this possible financially uh, and who? What? <laughs> Yeah, sir, we don't. <laughs> and uh, yeah, camera. Uh, what's your name again? Suleiman. Suleiman. <laughs> and Hairu, who is doing the um, editing, live editing of the images uh, backstage. Uh, so thanks a lot. And um, did I? Hmm? Is there still room for questions? There's room for questions, yes. Somebody asks on YouTube. Ah. So this Franz Bochard asking on YouTube, are you a permanent quartet? And in the brackets, for the time being. Mm -hmm. Well, you can answer it. Shall I answer it? Okay. <laughs> 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 I think I can answer that. <laughs> yes, we are a permanent uh, quartet. I mean, we started uh, in 1998. We restarted uh, with Jana uh, quite recently, and we have big plans we want to continue we have uh, this project is ongoing and we're planning to continue with this uh, to write some more music and to perhaps bring it to a residency uh, pretty soon <laughs> if everything works out we have this plan mm -hmm. and we might have also a series of concerts uh, in specific places for bird watchers if that works out as well mm -hmm. and um, yeah, other projects uh, such as the Amsterdam Real Book uh, 
playing music of the uh, improvised uh, scene from Amsterdam. That's also part of our plans. And who knows what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any more questions for now. <laughs> and if people are still watching, I think there is a donate button um, under the video mm. somewhere. Um, I guess it goes to PayPal. Um, so if you feel like uh, supporting the arts in difficult times, um, yeah, that's very much appreciated. You also help this place here to survive. Thanks a lot. It's good to have some applause. <laughs> 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 one new question, but it's, uh, one new question? Uh, we can answer here. Um, Are we planning to record an album? Yes, here? One day. Yeah, can you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's only possible to write from the no, no, no. I mean, as a pause for that. Ah, yeah. Great. Can we record it? Yeah, of course we are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but we don't have a specific plan yet, no? It's, it's, for, it's in the. Long term. It's, it's in the project, <laughs> <laughs> in the application. <laughs> it's, uh, it's gonna happen. Yeah. yeah. Mm. My mom says, wonderful sounds over a dystopic landscape. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. <laughs> Great. Nice, guys. Beautiful yeah. place. Yeah. So cool. I think Blink One was uh, really blinking. Yeah. yeah.